Good evening, everybody, and thank you for uh, joining us today. I know it's been a hot day for everybody, so let's try. I don't want to hold you anymore. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. NFL, first game of the season just started today, so <laughs> I'm going to try to make it as fast as possible. So I will, instead of taking five hours, we'll take just two. So, uh, so welcome to the uh, 2024 uh, fall season referee refresher, right? So uh, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Mark Guevara. I'm the ref admin. I've been with the region since 2013, like everybody else. We all volunteer, started as a coach, and then volunteer, uh, volunteered to be a referee, and then became a board member. And then currently I'm an advanced referee, Work uh, just completed my schooling for national referee, so looking forward to finish this up this year. And then uh, the other, uh, I'm gonna let the other players introduce themselves, and then we'll keep over the presentation. Go ahead, Steve. Hi, my, uh, my name is Steve Diethelm. I've been with the region since 2021. I started my AYSO journey in South Redondo Beach uh, 19 years ago. Uh, I'm currently the referee, a director of referee assessment and an advanced referee. And thank you for spending the time with us tonight. There'll be some good information uh, shared for us as we get prepared to start our season whenever the temperatures drop. Go oh, yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm, I'm Al Prado. I I guess on the website, I am the referee director of instruction for 1463. I've been involved in AYSO since 2004, uh, as all four of my kids and all seven of my, my, my kids and my wife's kids have gone through the program. I'm a national referee, and I'm also currently, I hold this, this section uh, director of assessment position, so I can, I'm here to help Mauro attain his goal this year as soon as possible. And, uh, and Jaime, take the class, and you too, my friend, should, uh, you know, and while we record, I can say the pay is much better as a national. So, uh, more games. Anyway. It adds zeros to your salary. <laughs> they, right? they do. They do. They add uh, more games to your schedule. Yeah. I exactly. No, I've started refereeing as you know, and there's something about refereeing that I think, um, you know, that, that uh, clearly the four of us love what we do. And I think if you, if you can get by your first year or two, and we're here to help you get by those this first year or two, uh, if you have a knack for it, it, it is very rewarding. And uh, as you can see, we're having some fun ahead of time. So it's a nice community to be a part of. So, and I'd like to say tomorrow's the point as well. Thank you for taking time off of your day with, you know, kids and homework and everything else you have to do attend a, another meeting about a wise home refereeing. But, uh, you know, we're all here for the kids and the kids, believe it or not, do appreciate it. And it is rewarding to them. We really do enrich their lives. So thank you. Simon, just a quick for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, quickly for me, I'm, I'm just here to support Morrow, support Alan, support Steve for the most part. Hey, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Jaime Bencia. I am the current regional commissioner for 1463. Uh, I am also an advanced referee. I just recently became a regional referee instructor, so really excited about that, uh, which is awesome. So I'm not going to take up too much time. I know Morrow is excited to get started to kind of talk to you guys, but but Al said it best a second ago. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for re refereeing. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for being a part of our community. It means a lot. It's going to mean a lot to the kids, and it means a lot to us. Um, so thank you again, everybody, and we, we cannot wait to get you guys out on the field as referees. Thanks, everybody. Right. Go for it, Morrow. Next slide, please. So this is pretty much the meeting agenda for today. So we already do the introductions and then we're gonna go over some basic reminders for new and returning referees. And we're gonna go over some of the loss of the games and then the updates that just happened in this July, I think July 1st, the new updates came out. So Al and Steve will go over that stuff. And then Q and A. So right now, if you have any questions, uh, the chat's available. Uh, you can post your question in there. We will answer it for you. if. We don't get a chance, which is we'll do at the end of, at the end of the presentation. Uh, next slide. So basic reminders for new returning referees, right? So what do I do showing up for the PO on day one? If I'm brand new, if I'm returning, you know, it's been a long summer. We forget a lot of things. We did a lot of vacations. So now it's time to get back into the grind and get back to the field, right? So number one, uh, as soon as you arrive, you know, we got to check the field, right? Check the field around, walk around, check the marquees, make sure all the lines, all the touch lines, all the goal lines, penalty areas, have, you name it, everything is visible so you can see it in order to execute your match. Uh, corner flags, make sure we got corner flags, make sure you're in the proper spot. Okay, we got a question. Uh, make sure the corner flags are in the place they were supposed to be at. Uh, if if there's no corner flag, then I don't foresee that because most of the times you are 1463 
the day prior to Saturday, the board members and all the volunteers will come over on Friday and set out the field. So when you walk first thing Saturday morning, the fields are already ready to go. You just got to do it at a quick walk down. Uh, check for any dangerous conditions, right? Any uh, gopher holes, uh, you name it, any over water spots, you know, maybe Marietta over water the, the fields. I don't see that happening right now, but <laughs> check that. But check the fields, make sure they're in great condition. Great condition. Is there any spots there's going to be any dangers to you? The system referee or the referee or the players, please grab a marker, put it on the on the field. I know those uh, orange cones, orange markers. Just put it on top of it so everybody knows there's a danger in there, uh, so they don't trip. Uh, look at the sprinkler heads. Make sure they're down. They're not sticking out. It's just in, we don't want a, a youngster kick the sprinkler head instead of kicking the ball. Right? We haven't seen that happening yet, but you never know. So anything that could be a danger to a player or yourself. Or all the assistant referees, make sure we be taking care of that. If you cannot handle the situation before your match start, reach out to the board members on the tents. Have somebody come and get the board members, and we'll definitely take care of that for you. Uh, checking the goals, right? We got to check the goals, right? Like I said, everything's set up prior to you coming off for the game. Make sure the goals are properly assembled. They're not broken. Nobody hung overnight, you know. Somebody broke into the field, started hanging all over the goals. Make sure they're not sagging. The crosses are good to go. Make sure that the centers are. Make sure that the goals are centered. Right? They usually put it be centered. They usually pretty much are. Everything's already done for you. Just verify. Make sure they are good to go and and just fix it. Uh, check for the front of the post. Make sure that line in the front. You know, make sure everything is good to go. Align with it. The goals are good to go. Right? And and you should be have your ARs do it for you. If you're the assistant referee or the referee, make sure you check all that stuff in there. Make sure they anchor. Make sure they, uh, all the goals are anchored, right? You don't want them to be moving all over the place. That I don't see that, right? We don't get hurricane winds up here in Marietta. But if we do, make sure the goals are anchored. Like I said already, 99.9% .9 of the time, time is already done for you. But just verify, make sure it's good to go. Check the nets. Make sure they're properly attached, right? And there's any openings on the nets, either get somebody to get you some zip ties or make sure uh, get a board member to fix it for you, but make sure we check that. If you are a referee or a system referee, make sure you introduce yourself to your ARs, right? Write down the names, make sure who they are. If it's the first time you meeting them, we just had a big class yesterday. I think we had a total number, but I say about 30 people, Steve, this, this fall coming to our classes? Yeah, <clears throat> at least 30, yep. Yeah, at least 30 brand new referees. So you might get new re new people coming over uh, doing games for the first time. So introduce yourself to them and then, uh, you know, provide a pregame, right? Any specifics, you know, just for specifics, just keep it simple, right? Second to the last defender, make sure the ball goes out of bounds and the offside. That's it, keep it simple, especially for 10U and AU, it's just gonna be you, right? You just gotta make sure everything is safe and you be and then uh go over the expectations, like I said, cover everything, make sure everything is covered so you can execute and everybody uh is ready to execute the game. Next slide. Perfect. And then real fast, sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt Mauro. So right. just uh to, to follow up to what Mauro just said a second ago, one of the things that Mauro himself asked me about recently, we have these pregame cards that we give out to referees and that way they will actually tell you these little teeny tiny cards will actually tell you as referees all the bullet points you need to remember to talk about with your AR. So that way if you don't remember offhand, you just get this little card out and it'll it'll tell you everything you need. So if you do not have one of these cards, please 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 talk to uh Mauro. He will he will help you out and he'll provide you one. Yeah, just talking about those cards. They'll be in the ref on the ref tent. Just pick one up, please. And don't pick any more than one because which is they're very limited right and just pick one up keep it in your pocket so when every, every time you do a game you have something to follow the next thing we want to do during the game which is uh uh check in with the coaches right introduce yourself right maybe it's the first time you meet this coach introduce yourself let them know who you are who your crew are and shake hands right it's a, it's a good you know good way to uh set the tone for the game right you know they you let them know that, hey I, I care who you are you're the coach you spend a lot of time you know, uh, coaching the kids, and this is who I am. Uh, 
as a 14 1463 the 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 game balls will be provided by the by the board they should be in the center of the uh of the halfway circle i mean on the center circle if they're not uh let let somebody know uh we'll get we'll get some soccer balls but uh, like I said, uh, we usually will prepare prior to Saturday uh, to executing all the games because everything will be there for you ready to execute. Check the inflation of the balls. Make sure they're properly inflated. If they're not, let somebody know. We'll, we'll break out a pump. Maybe one of the coaches has one, right? Don't do the Tom Brady and just make sure they're underinflated, right? So check the proper inflation. Inspect the teams, right? As we always do, let the teams come in, uh, inspect them, right? Check make sure you got a complete uniform. Everybody should have a uniform by now. I think we had it there during the uh, coach. What happened? How about you just don't want them to play? Uh-oh. Okay. It's Carlos. Uh, make sure they got the complete uniform. I think everybody should have a uniform in hand already. If not, you should be reaching out to your coach and somebody on the board to get you a, a, a uniform. Shin guards, make sure they're completely covered by the socks, right? They, they don't they don't go over the socks. They go under the socks, right? If they want, and then that's the proper way to do it. Uh, jewelry, make sure there's no jewelry, no e no earrings. Uh, none of that stuff is allowed. No jewelry at all, right? Uh, uh, medical bracelets are are authorized, but make sure they just tape them over or they put something over to cover them up. You don't have to take them off. Right. If a, if a coach tells you, oh, my player just put his earrings, uh, uh, a player just put his earrings yesterday, can they play like that? No. If they can be put tape over it, no, you cannot. There's no jewelry at all, at all, at all times. Right. That's pretty much it. And then any cast, splint, braces, etc., not allowed. Right. If they have a cast, sorry, you cannot play. If, if they have to be clear to play, the cast has to be removed. And, uh, if they want to wear a cap, it's not allowed, right? It's a play. Now, the goalkeepers can wear one. They have to be soft built caps just in case the sun, especially now we're in the middle of the summer. But I usually don't foresee any 8U or 10U players wearing ball caps. I haven't seen one yet. So anything that I missed so far, guys, out of these areas? No, I think you've covered it. Okay. Pre-game team formalities, right? When you're ready to start the game, proceed to the center circle, right, with the game ball, right? And then check the game balls, administer the coin, the, the coin flip, right? By any chance that you don't have a coin, please do not delay the game because you don't have a coin, especially for uh, 8U, 10U, that, it doesn't matter, right? Do not delay the game. Get creative. Rock, paper, scissors, you name it. Uh, put your fingers, how many fingers I got behind my back. But at no moment, delay the game because you don't have a coin and you start 10 minutes late because of a coin. I minister the, uh, the coin flip, and then whoever wins the coin flip has a, cho has a choice either to kick, do the kickoff, or or they, they defer to the second half to pick, or they can pick a side, okay? Uh, silently count the players, right? Usually upper division games, I leave it up to my assistant referees, but in AU, I mean AU or 10U, uh, you can also count the players and determine they're all ready to go. Right. You can check with the goalkeeper. Are you ready? Are you ready? And then one day everybody give you the thumbs up and then your assistant referees got their flags on furrow, ready to go, pointing towards the field. And then you can blow the whistle and then you can start to watch when the ball moves. OK, next slide. Oh, real Actually, quick. I think we got a uh, raised hand from Al. Yeah, if, if I may, the, the one thing I should have clicked on earlier, and I apologize for that, uh, in terms of the earrings, that is probably the toughest decision you'll make all yeah. uh, all season long. Especially the first few weeks, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get an adorable seven year old, eight year old. I'm gonna say girl here for the most part, right? Nine year old got a pierce yesterday, and you're gonna see tears. You might be even called be insulted. Um, it is very clear in the law book you can't have it even taped. But the one thing I want to make is if that happens to you, stand but you know st stick stick to your guns as it were. Oh, sorry, bad example. Stick to your principles as it were, and um, the board the board members will support you a hundred percent on that. So again, it's probably the toughest call you'll make, and it, it breaks your heart because a cute little Jenny's not gonna be able to play because the earrings I got pierced yesterday. I'm sorry, but uh, the board members will support you a hundred percent. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, just to wrap up my little uh, introduction about reminders, I wrap I wrap with plenty of time, at least thirty minutes, right? I wrap with plenty of time. 
make sure you got the proper equipment, your full uniform, watch, uh, a whistle, and the wallet that was given to you when you uh, – if you don't have a uniform yet, when you sign up for your first match, you will get a, a, a uniform packet that would include socks, shorts, jersey. Uh, you already had a whistle because we give you one of the best whistles there is in the market during your class, so use that. <laughs> and then uh, your wallet, and your wallet should include all the uh, – caution and send off cards. So if you don't have that by now, if you are returning uh, referee, if you need something out of these items, please let us know ahead of time so we can bring it over. Not this Saturday, it's unfortunate. There won't be no games this Saturday, but we still got another week to uh, get ready and then uh, we'll bring you your gear up. Remember, like I, like I said, in every referee, man, every referee class or so in the past, if you're the referee, you're in charge. You are in charge of that, of that match. Right, you in charge of the entire entire match, and then you in charge of your assistant referees. So remember, your assistant referee is there to assist you, not to insist on in anything else. So make sure you, that's what's very important that you do a pregame, uh, 30 minutes prior to the game. Everybody checks their uniform. They look professional. They walk into the field, and that creates credibility walking into the field as a team. Right? Trust me. Uh, I hate to brag, but Marietta, so far, I can say in section, I can go further than that. Maybe one of the best referee programs there is, and it's, it's not because all of these gentlemen right here assisting me right there, and a lot of the board members have, have helped get this referee program up to where it's at right now. And this is the way we want to keep it. Marietta uh, has got one of the best referee programs I've seen. It's seen within my experience, at least within Section One. Yeah. Thanks, Al. We just validate that. I'm shutting down. We're done. I just <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I got this recording. That part will be edited and put on our main website. Just heads up. Just heads up. Send it to 37. <laughs> so once again, pregame, 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 pregame. Very important, right? Uh, just talk about the basics of the card that, uh, that uh, Jaime talked about. It's over here. Pregame card will be available for you on the ref tent. Pick one up, put it in your pocket, and go over the pregame. Uh, don't forget to sign up at the uh, 1463 referee tent. Put your name on it which is there, so you can get that volunteer points, even though you already signed up on CGI and you got to get those points. Don't forget that because Carlos will get you at the end if you don't have those referee points. Josh has his hand up, by the way, just in case we know. Oh, it's, okay, Josh. Hey, sorry. You were talking about um, keeping time. And, and uh, what, if, what if I'm a new referee and I don't have a watch that uh, either has a stopwatch or a timer? Can I just use my phone to keep time? Uh, no, I will highly encourage uh, new referees not to have a cell phone or a stopwatch, please. So now that we cancel this week, if you don't have a watch now, please, uh, if you have an Amazon account or Walmart or whatever, you know, go get you a $10. Yeah, piece I was going to say, I see what you did there, Josh, because I just put a, the worst link of all time on our comments. But just as a heads up to you guys, it's an incredible watch for referees, very simple, and it's 20 bucks right now. Get that watch. It's the watch, one of the watch. I basically use that watch all the time. So just heads up on that. And at the same time, it looks professional, right? You have a watch rather than have a phone or have a stopwatch, right? You don't want to run around and nah, that, we will not let that happen too. So, oh, let me see what else, where am I at? So, uh, reminder the length of the halves for each division. Uh, I don't know if I want to go over that. I want to cover that. So remember, 8U is a 40 minute game, right? 20-minute halves, 10-minute quarters. For 10U, uh, is a 50-minute 50 50 game, 25-minute halves, and 12-and-a-half-minute quarters. For 12U, is a 60-minute game, 30-minute halves, 15-minute quarters. For us senior referees, right, 14U, 70-minute game, 35-minute halves, 17-and-a-half-minute quarters. For 16U, uh, it's 80 minute game, 40 minute halves. There's no quarters in that one. For 19U, now that we have a lot of 19U games in our region now, it's a 90 minute game and it's a 45 minute half. So uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, even your, your, your game card will have those times in there annotated for you. Uh, remember the number of players, uh, dress professionally, bring referee accessories, right? There's a, I will have, there's a presentation how how you're supposed to look when you walk in the field. The first couple of weeks here on 1463, just be a little bit lenient, right? 
I know we're not supposed to be coaches on the field, but sometimes we have to be, right? As referees, we are uh, there to enforce the laws of the game, not to coach. But think about it, 8U, 10U, and then 10Us went up to 12U, so they don't, uh, they don't they forget some things. So you there just to kind of correct them a little, give them a little guidance for the first couple of weeks, and you can talk to the coach during the half, during the quarters, hey, coach, just keep an eye on the throw-ins, you know, keep an eye on the – release of the ball during the uh during the build out line so that's things that you can do right and lastly water breaks water breaks water breaks right uh in the next week or two weeks it's gonna be extremely hot right if we go back the following saturday believe me we have a good safety safety coordinator that will let us know ahead of time as far as the uh the weather and then we will let everybody know ahead of time about the water breaks, right? So if you, if you think as a referee is extremely hot, right? It's up to you to manage the water breaks. But remember, it's a water break, right? Just, just give them a quick water break, maybe one or two minutes roughly, and then get them back on the field because remember, you always got a running clock. Other than that, I think that's pretty much all I have on my end. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, and then please don't forget to email me. My email is on the website. And then looking forward to see you all, not this Saturday, hopefully the, next, the following Saturday we can get back on the pitch and get some games going. All right, thank you. Steve, want to take Real quick, next? actually. Oh, there wanna, there, it, is. I forgot there it is. Yeah, you forgot about this one more. So, see, look at that picture right there. As uh, yeah. you walk in the field, look at the shorts. going to be black shorts, black socks. You know, uh, the shoes, black, black laces, you know. And then if you want glasses, right? I have, I have that question all the time. Can I wear sunglasses? Yes, you can, but they have to be prescription, right? Prescription glasses. And I'll leave it, I will leave it up to the honor system on that one, right? Because I usually like to ask referees are those prescription. If you tell me, yes, they are, I will believe you, right? But if they're not, please do not wear sunglasses. Mine are sunglasses because I have to wear them. They are prescription. All right? Make sure you have your badge on your on your uh, yellow jersey. If you don't have a badge, once again, reach out to the team. We will get you one. Hats, a black hat. You can be all black. Or we have the all black uh, Marietta uh, referee program hats that we usually issue out. If you already have one, use those. No, any organizational uh uh, logos, i.e. Padres, i.e. Chargers, none of that stuff. Definitely right? no, ra no Raiders. Oh, easy, easy. I didn't mention that. <laughs> so if you look at this picture, it will be available on the website. It gives you some of the things that you're supposed to have, your wallet, your match report, the cars, the whistle, uh, a coin, pens, watch. So just so when you walk in that field, you look very professional and your flags. Your flags will be on the ref tent ready for you and available. Real fast, Moro, especially for the brand, brand new referees that might be on the call, what do we provide them as far as this list is concerned? What we're going to provide you is a jersey, a badge, the shorts, and the socks. They may not be what we're wearing right there because a different brand. Everybody bought the one specific brand, but you get it, you get that, and they're not going to be long sleeve. They're going to be short sleeve. Uh, you get a wallet. You get a match report, and I think that match, uh, the wallet comes with a card, and you get a whistle. And I think you get a coin, too. Other than that, the watch and the pens, you have to provide it yourself. Sometimes we keep some on the tents that you can borrow, but we, we're not pretty stocked up on those. But, but that's what you're going to get as a brand-new referee. And then once you sign up on CGI for your first match, uh, Steve will have your uniform uh, uh, at the uh, board tent with your name on it, so you can just pick it up. Please arrive earlier if you have a match, so you can change. Please, like I said before, if you if you're missing any items for your match prior to starting, please don't come over the morning off because we also got other things to do, i.e., the referee or go mentor. So us going back and forth to the car to get stuff for yourself is very very difficult. So send us an email ahead of time. Hey, Mauro, Steve, anybody in the ref admin pro, uh, team. Hey, I'm missing some short skin. I get a, okay, we can get you some. Or I'm missing a jersey. Or sometimes people put pins on their jersey and they blow up on their jersey. We have some replacements. But we are very limited to the, all these items because nowadays everything's getting very expensive. Please, I will ask you to take care of this gear because we definitely don't have a, a stock available to be just giving it out. All right, that's all I have.
Thank you very much. You want to do this, Steve? Oh, the updates, okay. Yeah. Turn this over to Al. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so this, I'm not gonna read the whole slide to you, but every year, um, I, IFAB, International Football Association Board, which is a governs our laws of the game, they come up with changes. And, you know, for the, for the most part, the same rules that we, same laws that we follow within AYSO 1463 is followed by all the players internationally. Um, so oftentimes the rule changes don't, the law changes don't impact us as much as you'll see that coming down, but sometimes they do. So the laws, as I think as uh, Steve or somebody mentioned, they're in, they take effect J July 1st of every year. We in AYSO, because the membership year starts August 1st, we, we implement them you know, starting August 1st or, or for fall season. Um, so this is, this is sort of why, why the law changes happen and when they happen. And um, each year, the AYSO National, Board, National Referee Council reviews the law changes and makes a decision on what's applicable for AYSO. There's a very specific example coming up, this, uh, coming up in a couple of slides about the changes made this year and how we are going to apply that within AYSO. Plan, but they did. Is your question? Okay. I think we're good. Okay, good. So I'm going to go over some law changes that happened last year for, for those for those, people, for those who may have missed it, but uh, they're also very important to have because it, it does it does impact our games as well. So these are law changes from last year. If you're a new referee, these are just the current laws. But if you're returning and missed a couple of seasons or so, these are new law changes. So I'm going to go ahead next slide as you had it. Uh, the big thing last year, and we're taking the lead from the high school association, are hair beads. Um, it really is a, is a safety issue, um, and, and um, you know it's not a racial issue. It, nothing that it's really a safety issue. And as long as, in our opinion, as referees, we feel they're safe for the player and the uh, the other players as well. So you know, hair beads if they're loose. When they when they you know when they swing their heads to you know to, to, as they're playing, it could potentially hit somebody in the face and do some damage there. So these are examples of when they're allowed and when they're not allowed. Um, tough call to make again, but this, these are examples of when what's allowed was not allowed. Um, and it really is a safety thing. And if, it, if, if in your opinion of the referee, it's safe, game on. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, just before you go on, on, on picture E on this slide here, notice it's a hair clip. Right, not safe because it is sharp and could come off, and at that point could do some some serious damage, serious damage as well. Any questions on the um, on the hair beads? Good. Um, the next thing is also hair charms and jewelry is considered jewelry, not permitted. It's not that we're anti-fashion; it's just that we're you know we're, we're pro safety, right? Um, next page, please. Thank you. Uh, medical devices, um, we allow them as long as, in, in our opinion, they are safe. Um, for example, a temporary cast, as long as there's nothing hard on it, we allow. But anything with even the, the, with with the, with the metal, with with the met with the metal, um, you know, portion within within the arms, with, within a um, within a splint, not allowed. And they can't take off the metal to play. If they need the metal, they you know they can, they can't play. Um, and no cast, clearly. Um, and it's our decision to freeze with whether it's safe or not. Any questions? I think we should, you know, go into some of the other medical devices down there, insulin pumps and that, just yep. to make sure that, you know, as long as they're safe, thank you. Yeah, player exactly. can play. Yeah. You know, everybody plays is really about playing half the match, but uh, we, you know, so, you know, but we always encourage them as we do what we can to make them play as long as it's safe for the player and, and you know, for all the players, including the player who we're, we're with them. Thank you, Steve. Okay, the updates for, for this year, right? Um, the shin guards, big one for the players. At this point, we're, we are to trust the players that have shin guards. So that's what you do at, at the international levels. We at AYSO, we, as referees, we still check. And a um, little leeway in terms of what, how big they should be. Uh, but I think at, at this point, for the younger ages, 8, 10s, and 12s, they, they, they're appropriate sizes. They tend to get smaller as they get older different issue we deal with um but they have to again we have to protect the player um questions on that okay uh the law change that doesn't impact us too much is the captain's band um international matches high level matches they wore the band on on their on their um on, on their sleeves so uh, we're not going to enforce that with anyway so but we need to know who the captains are um there is no special duties to a captain 
but just to identify the team captain is Morrow. Hey, Jaime, I believe these armbands are already given to the coaches, right? That's yeah, correct. okay. Yes. So looks like we'll have them in 1463. Good. Okay. Good. Good call, Mr. RC. Um, <laughs> okay, the third law four changes includes uh, um, gloves and tracksuit bottoms from compulsory to other equipment, meaning a keeper does not have to have gloves and or, or, and or pants. They can, they, can, they can play gloveless and uh, with shorts on and not have the pants. Ashley, you're on mute. Ashley, do we have to ask her on mute? I don't. I don't can think we I unmute can. her? I don't. I think, think you should be able to. Oh my there, you okay, go. I there you go. Got there it. you go. There you go. Um. Say so, hey, guys. Uh. So, are even eight you gonna have captain bands? Uh. Or is that too young? Uh, no, are... it's only from competitive, so from 10 you and up. So okay. comp competitive divisions, which are considered from 10 you and up, will have Is that your daughter in the background? <laughs> Why we're here. <laughs> okay. Um, follow along here. Next slides. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. On fouls and misconduct, again, this is really more applicable to the, the older divisions. Um, in 10U, 12U, a lot, a lot of leeway here because we're talking about the words intentional, and uh, I don't think anything is done intentionally in the 10U match. <laughs> so, um, okay, we're trying to address at the, at the higher levels non-deliberate handballs. So um, a deliberate handball we interpret as a freeze as a result of an intent of intentionally moving the arm to make you know towards the path of the ball and or to make ourselves bigger to make the body bigger um non-deliberate is um you know when in your opinion what they what they do is is not a deliberate move and again we we err towards uh safety for this so if a player is protecting themselves especially in 10 you nine out of ten times it is not a handball it is just they're just clumsy and or goofy and um you know, as, as a nine or 10 year old and protecting themselves. So be very lenient in my opinion on the handballs for, for the youth divisions. Um, the parents on the sidelines will not know that, but you as a referee now with, with your class and now this refresher course will know that. And we, again, the ref tent will support you hundred percent on not making the handball calls. Um, the, the general rule of thumb and you guys weigh in on this as well is did the ball play the hand or the hand play the ball? Does that make sense for the new referees? If in your maybe, opinion, maybe, maybe explain which is which, though. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> good point. <laughs> so, if, if in your opinion, the ball hit the, the the ball hit the hand, it is not a handball, right? If it took a funny bounce or the player, you know, and some some would say in ten u, this is a natural position for a girl or a boy, right? Their hands are up naturally. So, in your opinion, there is accidental, not a handball. If you think the ball, the hand played the ball. More likely rare in 10 and 12 view, but if you think that the, the hand played the ball, then it is a handball. Questions, comments? Amanda? You may be on mute. She's also trying to buy that awesome watch that I gave her. Over yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Um, so some players will raise their hands to protect themselves. I'm kind of just wondering, um, do you call that or because, if, if, you know, the technically, you know, they're. If, if in your opinion, they're protecting themselves, do not. It's not a handball. Okay. And understand that there are many. There's many components into that decision, right? In terms of how old are the players, how you know how close to the, how, how close to play they are, all sorts of things. But you know, at this point, at nine and ten or eleven and twelve, they're likely protecting themselves and not trying to gain any. They're not trying to you know gain the system on that. So, uh, if in your opinion they are protecting themselves, you know, you may want to say out loud, "Not a handball," or it's something to communicate to the parent that you saw it, but you're letting, mm -hmm. them, letting them play. Okay. Sean, you had your hand up. Did you took it down, or did that answer your question? Uh, yes, that answered my question. Thank you. Okay, good. Two for one. Excellent. Um, okay, next slide, please. The penalty kick. Um, 
This chart here is pretty good. It, it, it comes from the IFAB laws of the game. By the way, little plug, um, IFAB does have a, an app on both Android and uh, iOS for you know Android for you know for um, Android and iPhones. Download the app. It keeps you you know it's updated with all the laws of the game and all the um, all these kind of charts. So basically, uh, this just this chart here. If you want to take a picture, a screenshot, feel free to do so. Um, but when taking a penalty kick, it talks about the encroachment, which means either the attacking player does something illegal as, as, as he's trying to kick the ball or players who are not kicking the ball step into the penalty area before the ball is kicked and or the keeper moves before the ball is kicked or crosses the, you know, crosses the, crosses the, uh, the line before the ball is kicked. These are what happened and these are the re what happens with the, uh, as a result of that. Mr. Pellegrini. Could you give us an example of when the attacking player does something illegal? When the when the kicking player? Well, it, good question. Um, at this point, you can once you once you begin your run, you can start and stop or stutter step as much as you want. Once you begin the kicking process, once the player begins the kicking process, then they cannot stop. They got to follow through, and that's an infraction. Or Thank if you. you're a non-kicker, you enter mm -hmm. the penalty area before Correct. the kick is taken. Correct. Yeah. So, did that answer your question, Stefano? Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, good. Okay. And again, the one thing 1463, by the way, I've been with the region now for three years. I started in 2021 along with, with Steve. And uh, there, there's awesome tent referee board members at the, the, the tent presence. So, if you have a question, you know, somebody's there all day to answer your questions. And if not, you know, we're around all day. Pull us off and ask us. So, we'll get support. Hey, Al, just real quick. Additionally, with that is uh, to talk about mentors, right? You always, if you're a brand new referee, even a returning referee, you know, on CGI, you have the opportunity to request a mentor. And the, the mentor is going to be with you uh, if you request it, and they're going to give you some guidance. And when it comes to this type of calls, like penalty kicks, anything that you have questions, don't, don't, don't feel bad or reaching out to the mentor. Ask him, hey, I can't remember the restart. I don't remember this. Uh, can you help me out? They will be definitely give you the, the, the proper answer to help you out. So if you're brand new, you sign up for a mentor, and the mentor should be able to walk you through the whole process from the pregame all the way to the postgame. And if you're a brand new referee, let me tell you, you're going to make mistakes. Life goes on, move on. You're going to make mistakes. We, you know, at every level, we make mistakes. No matter what the match is, no matter who it is, you see you know, folks at the World Cup make, you know. So it's unfortunately part of the game. All we can hope for is that the mistake we make doesn't impact the outcome of the game. But even if it does, so what, <laughs> right? Life goes on. So uh, don't be too hard on yourself. And, uh, you know, you're going to make mistakes. Accept it and move on. And if you want to help with that, come talk to us afterwards. Okay. Any questions, comments for any of us? Is that the end of the deck, Mario? The end of the deck, yes. Wow. You got some good looking people on those pictures. What are those? Where yeah. they come from? Wow, fancy. It's all stock photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the gentleman getting his upgrade on the upper left hand side is Jim Simpson, who's our scheduler. So you get emails from Jim, I think. Uh, four or five times a day and uh i mean i mean a week and uh <laughs> so you're the guy who just got his upgrade last year so uh there's steve and morrow present them with the badge so good good, good on them hey steve you have anything else to add i just say uh just touching back on the uniform stuff the the more notice you can give us on any kind of replacement uh, equipment that you need it makes it easier for us to make sure that we either can go to storage to go get it or actually have it in the local inventory that we keep. So uh, the most notice you can give us on any of that, like new pair of socks or shorts, uh, the better. Just thank you for that. Yeah, go ahead, Amanda. Uh, I was just hoping you could go over like the direct and indirect kicks. Um, I just, you know, I forget, but um, like AU, they always have indirect kicks, right? That's correct. Correct. Because there's no goalkeeper. Okay. So just think of everything there as a dangerous play. Okay. And then for the 10 and above, your direct kicks generally involve some form of contact, right? Right. There you go. Okay. 
with the exception of the the double handling of the ball, but that's still a direct kick. Okay. Still involves contact, contacting the ball. Is that a future player, Ashley? I know. I, I kept I kept looking at Ashley's screen. I'm like, that's a cute kid. I'm just staring at Ashley's screen for the most part. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Stefano, got a question? Uh, yeah, just uh, very quick. At eight year, the players tend to stay always in front of the goal. Uh, what is allowed and what shall I do as a referee? Defending player, meaning. Defending player tend to, you know, block the goal. So I, I'll tell you my end because – so I'll tell you my end, Stefano, whenever I, I uh, referee AU, which hasn't been very often, but I did it a couple times last season, um, I will constantly talk to the kids. So if I see a child that looks like they're defending and being goalkeeper, I will constantly be like, come on, buddy, let's go. you got to get close to the line or you got to get away from the actual goal. you got to be communicating at all times with the children, right? And, and then the next thing I would do because there have been times where even though I'm communicating with the child, they might leave, but then all of a sudden they're back. Right. And it keeps happening over and over again. I would just talk to the coach, talk to the coach, make sure you make them aware. Hey, just heads up as a reminder. They're not going to be they're not supposed to be goalkeepers. Can you talk to your kids and make sure that they're not? Because as you're probably aware, the other coach on the other side sometimes gets a little upset because they're like, hey, there's not supposed to be goalkeepers out there. Right. So I would just recommend use your voice. Be as nice as possible. Obviously, these children are, are very young, but just talk to them and just let them know, hey, make sure you're kind of outside of the goal and, and just help them direct them as best as possible. Yeah, and, just sorry, just, Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, sorry. One follow up: uh, uh, How close can they be to the goal and and be okay? I, you know, I would say there's that actual box. There's that goal area that we have in 8U. It's a little bit larger than when it kind of appears in 10U and everything else. I usually have them uh, pretty much around that line, around that area okay. of the of the, of the uh, goal area. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Just remember, usually they're in the attacking third. You know, have him come off to off, 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 outside the penalty area. If they're being uh, on the defending side, right, they cannot be like the entire team be parking the goal line, protecting the goal, right? That's that's almost like having a goalkeeper, right? So just go ahead and manage that. Like Jaime said, talk to the coach. That's a coaching thing, and you, I trust me. If you talk to the coach, eventually they'll get it, and the, the players will get it too. Yeah. And I, and I think a lot of times, Stefano, like if, if the parents are noticing and seeing that you're trying your best as a referee to tell the kids, hey, come on, come on. You're communicating with the kids. They'll all appreciate that because the, they can tell that you're trying. Right. Because sometimes the kids, hey, they just want to stick around as goalkeeper because that they just they just really want to. So just do the best. Oh, that, that's that. going to be my son. But um, <laughs> yeah. But um, but basically, other than talking with the kids and uh, and so showing that you are putting an effort, uh, nothing else than that. I mean, gentlemen, I don't know if you guys have any recommendations. I mean, I, I will admit for me that's tended to work, Stefano. Uh, okay. But do the best you can for the most part is what okay. I'd say and try to have fun and smile with the kids. So. Especially and, when they, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go for it. Go for it. Now, just trying to communicate with the players, you know, and then with the coaches. And, you know, the first couple of weeks, you're going to have that problem. Everybody want to guard, you know, the goal. And then as you, you know, you're familiar with the, with the, with the, game, with the game and in the field. And then they, if they're going in the attack, you know, why should be, why are they standing on the goal? Get off the goal, come off on top of the. Uh -oh. we lost, for some reason, we lost you, Mario. You went to New tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I just what you said a second ago was going to completely blow our minds. Yeah. Man. yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Now I forgot what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but well, I think tomorrow's point, though, maybe you can, as a referee, you know, if, if you're talking, especially during the, you know, to tell, walk up with the player and tell him or her where she, they where they should they should stand, right? Yeah. I think that lead by example and tomorrow's yeah. points involve the coach. Yeah, okay. a good pregame, a good pregame. Talk to the coaches as far as that a. Eh? Be advised that I'm gonna be watching the the goal guarding, right? I don't want like all the whole entire team to be sitting in front of the goal. Okay. Now they know that they can talk to the players. So your yeah. pregame is very important with the coaches, since you don't have assistant referees. Thank you, guys. No worries. Any other questions? I know there should be like thousands of questions coming out. Yeah. No. So one thing I want to try and do, and Mauro, let me know what you think. I, I think this could be helpful for everybody. Um, 
as as a ref instructor, we tend to have the one PowerPoint that you know we go over in terms of like what are indirect you know free kicks, what are direct is all all of those kind of quick explanations. I know we got a question about that earlier. I don't want to post the entire deck because I don't think that's necessary. But maybe specific sections of it, like indirect kicks, free kicks, what is what what are penalty kicks, all that kind of basic info. I think we'll put up there on the, on the referee portal, so that way, if any one of you ever want to take a look, you easily can. You can just browse through that PDF or PowerPoint and, and refresh yourself there as well. Yeah, we can do that too. Also, like uh, Al said, you know, your i5 app, you know, is on your phone. Prior to the game, you can just go over indirect and, and indirect free kicks. Kind of gives you the quick understanding. You're not gonna have the majority of those kicks, and specifically for eight U or ten U, the most you're gonna see is playing in a dangerous manner, right? Stay on the floor, try to uh, try to kick the ball when you got ten other players around you, right? Or ten U, you might you might think it's a push or or a tackle or a kick. You know, if you see it, right? If you think is 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 wrong. Right, just call it. Right, and no harm, no harm, no foul. Right, because that's how we learn. Right, by making mistakes. Right, and the next time you do the game, okay, I should never, I shouldn't call that call. I should let the play develop, so I see what happens. Because remember, I'm ten U, eight U. They're still developing their skills. Right, the dribbling, handling the ball. So give them some time to if deliver it, call it. Right, because sometimes it happens. You know, I don't do a lot of ten U games or eight U games, but when I see it call it right and remember in 10 you you got the build that line right you don't have to go all the way to the halfway line in order you just go to the to the build that line same thing on AU, you got to build that line too but there's no assistant referees right so that means every play has to go back to the build that line so the uh, so the uh the, the attacking team can start their, their their play so things like that is already on the website right you can look at the video again uh, like i said if you have any questions do not hesitate or email or call or whatever you need to do or prior to your game, hey, Mauro, Steve, Al, Jaime, hey, I got a quick question for you. How would I handle this? You know, I went through my game and I had the situation and I wasn't sure how to handle that. Maybe, and then we can give you some some guidance back. Or if your mentor saw you and, and, and annotated, and then you can sit down and go over the, you know, the, the pros and cons of your game so you can learn for the next time and put it in your toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. Another another quick piece of advice. This is going to sound insanely obvious, but you know, especially if you're a brand new referee, maybe show up even more, show up even earlier, and maybe watch a game at least a half, and watch the other referees and see what they're doing, and see just just so you kind of get a sense of what what they're doing and how they're doing it. And maybe if something's confusing to you, maybe for watching some of the referees and you're not sure what's going on, that could be a fantastic opportunity to tap one of our shoulders and ask us questions, right? Like I'm not sure I understand X, Y, and Z. So. Definitely recommend to, to try your best to kind of get there a little bit earlier and watch other referees in action so you get a better sense of what's going on. You have questions, there's plenty of YouTube videos that you can watch, our website, or other region websites, whatever you need to, you know, to get your research done before part of your game. But just remember, just don't be afraid, get get them, get up, sign up, do a game. Right, like Al say, we all make mistakes. Even myself, sometimes I'll make mistakes in upper division games. But guess what? I learn from it, and the next time I come back, I'll fix it and I do it better. Because you don't want to be afraid, right, of being the center, right, the center referee. Because I know most of you right now, the brand new referees, they're all lining up to sign up to be an assistant referee, right? And then, yeah, that that is fine. No problem with that. No, get up maybe three or four games under your belt as an assistant referee. Watch the ascendant referee how how, they, how he how he or she is executing the match or managing the game, and then you know what I can do this, right? Steve has a good example, like in every class, right? You know, ten U games or eight U games is like a play date, right? All of you got kids, all of you have birthday parties, right? Just you know how to manage that party in, the, in your backyard. The only difference with this one is you got a whistle, right? And you can get people's attention right away. Blow the whistle, get their attention. Hey, this is what I want you to be at, and trust me, you're gonna have a you have a, you're gonna have a great time. And for you new referees, you know what? Looking forward to see you out there. Looking forward to working with you, mentoring you, whatever we need to do to make your 1463 experience one of the best there is. Perfect. Anything else, everybody? Any questions? Anything else you need before we get out of here? What's up, Ashley? I got it. All right. <laughs> All right.
Um, so just didn't know if you wanted to touch on this because I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew that I couldn't coach and ref AU girls. That makes sense to me completely. Um, but I also cannot ref any division that any of my other kids are in, correct? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, you didn't. Sorry, re repeat that one more time. So, uh, I think, okay, so I think I understand what you're saying. You, Mora, do you understand? If you guys understand, oh, I see, I'm on the channel that one. I see what he wanted. So we we would prefer that you not referee in a division where you have children playing, but if that isn't possible, we also need you to cover games. So we'll trust that you're going to call a fair game, and is the the challenge there is there's potential conflict of interest if you're refereeing in your own division, right? Now, yeah, I, in that in that and and Steve's absolutely right, but I would say even less so in in eight U, for example, again because eight U is not considered a competitive division, right? I really don't think it's that's a problem at all. So even if you're an eight U, I'm I don't exactly remember Ashley what your situation is, but even if you're an, an eight U boys or if your child is an eight U boys or or girls whatever it's okay to be refereeing in that same gender division because it's not a competitive one, right? Um, and everything else Steve said is exactly true. If, if it's a situation where, hey, you need to get out there to ref, we need referees too, so absolutely go for it. Once you start getting up to the 10 year level, yeah, we ask you to do the opposite, right? If you have a, a female or male player, switch the opposite, right, in a different division. Yeah, but if you have questions, yeah. let us know. But definitely, we would like to see you refereeing games. Definitely makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, hey, Alicia. Um, well, okay, I've refed in. I have a son and a daughter in the league, and they're for one year at a time in the same division. And I've refed both the girls and the boys, whether it's eight U or ten U. And this season, they're both in ten U, and I'll be refing both. So, I imagine if you guys allow it, but that's yeah, the plan. No, I mean, basically what Steve <laughs> said earlier, I mean, unless Morrow and, and Steve, you guys have concerns there, but, you know, Alicia, especially because you're one of the referees who you've been stepping up lately, right? You've been wanting to get in there. You're starting to get in there as an actual referee, not so much as just an assistant referee. So I think we would want to motivate you to referee as much as possible. So I personally don't see a problem with that. Steve okay. and Mara, are you guys are good? Yeah. yeah and if it becomes a problem, we'll have to talk to you, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll let you know. Yeah. If all of a sudden the, the teams that are just ahead of you in the standings all of a sudden start getting all the fouls called against them, we have to uh, have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Seven send-offs in a 10-U match, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sending off the coach, getting them suspended for three games, you know, those kinds of things we'll want to make sure yeah. we address. Uh, yeah, one thing I do want to cover before that we call it a night is uh, any type of disrespect on the pitch, on the field, right? Uh, if any parent, coach is getting disrespectful towards you, especially youth referees, that is not going to be tolerated. Not here at 1463. I don't have any issues with parents if at any moment – you have any issues with the parent is getting uh, a little bit mouthy, kind of like giving you a hard time. Hey, Rev, that was a bad call. What about this call? And then the first thing you want to do is, you know, look at the coach. Tell the coach, hey, coach, I need you to handle this parent. And then if this, if this coach can handle the parent, and then we go to option B. We stop the play. We stop the game, pick up the ball. Because you already give this parent plenty of warnings, and then we can have the parent removed. And trust me, if we start hearing that as a board members, within seconds we'll have a whole slew of board members at your location backing you up, making sure that this parent is not going to disrupt your match. So once again, like I said, at 1463 or anywhere, right, especially here, there will be no disrespect or dissent towards any referee specifically youth referees. So if you see that, please let us know because definitely we will back you up 100%. And a couple of things, if I may, I, I put a, uh, I put our contact information on the chat. 
Mauro, myself, and Steve for any questions. And I also added a AYSO form. There's a publication that comes out once a month called The Whistle Stop. Mm-hmm. It sort of helps you join our referee community and uh, gives you some tips, gives you some some things. You know, it's from the national organization level, but it helps, helps enforce the fact that we are a referee community and we're here to support all, all of us. Stefano, one, one, another question? Yeah, very last one, just to follow up on, on what Mauro was saying. I've never been in that situation, but if we ever have to pick up the ball and stop the game, uh, does the, do we stop the clock too? No. No, clock's your clock you're going. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, that's the, the hammer that you have to say, you know, you're burning time. That's the unfortunate part that you have to stop the game and penalize the, the kids for a parent that cannot act mature or a coach. So it's very unfortunate, but that's one of your tools that you have in your toolbox to execute and get the get your point across that, hey, either you come down or, you know, you can walk on the other side of the fence in the parking lot and go home and cool off. Yeah. But Stefano, that, that's a very, very, very rare situation to have. Um, so be, be, it's good to know what you have to do, but uh, you know, I, I suspect it's not going to be a problem. We have great leadership in 1463 and uh, a lot of board member presidents. So somebody on one, at one of the tents, either for the for field one at the front or the other field, so, so, you know, if, if it's that bad, somebody else will hear it and come help you. Yeah, a lot of us are walking around just yeah. to, to Al's point and we're kind of looking. By the yeah. way, ra- random, you know, kind of on the same length, but – if you're out there, if you're thinking about being a referee, I would almost highly recommend that you get out there as soon as possible. And the Absolutely. reason I say, the reason I say that is obviously in the first one, two, three, four weeks, everyone's just getting into it, right? They're not the the competitiveness isn't there yet. You know, when you get to week seven, eight, nine, all of a sudden the competitive fire kind of gets going and people get a little bit more agitated, right? Uh, so if I were you, if you're a brand new ref. Be, be week one, week two, week three, jump in there as early as possible because at that point, everyone's just mostly just having fun and they don't know any better, right? So get your mistakes out of the way early. It, that's exactly right. If anything, <laughs> I got to do the same. I got to get my mistakes out of there early. So that's my plan. I'll wait till the end of the season when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any any last words, more and then we'll, we'll let everybody get out of here. No, uh, like I said before, hey, thank you very much, you guys. Like I said, without volunteers, especially referees, right? I know we got coaches and we got parents, but like at the end of the day, like we said in every class, without a referee, it's not a match. Yep. And you guys definitely, you know, are taking the challenge to become part of the team and become our, our, our referee so we can execute the matches and then we can have all our games every Saturday. So far, Knock on wood, you know, it's been years since we have to put in a club linesman on the field. And the plan is to continue to do that, recruiting new referees, youth referees. So if you have anybody uh, at the age, they actually can come over and take the class, especially high schoolers, they any community service, send them over, take the class, and then we can give them some, uh, some uh, hours with, so they can take back for their uh, high school project. But other than that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, unfortunately, no soccer this weekend, but you know what? Hey, this is perfect time to go on the IFAB and, and read all the, all the laws of the game. And then thank you very much for your time. Steve? Thank, thank, yep. you, everybody. No, thank you, everyone. Thank you all. See you next weekend. Okay. Have a good night. Bye.